Hi guys, Sarah here from Crochet Lefty and today we're going to go back to the basics. If you've never crocheted before this video or if you need to brush up on your skills, this video will be a, a good starting point because we're going to learn the single crochet and I'm going to throw in some learning how to weave in your ends uh, which is not difficult at all and we will learn the slip knot. So at the end of this video you should know how to do a slip knot, crochet the single crochet, and weave in your ends here. Fastening off and weaving in your ends. Now you'll be able to create this exact swatch or you can create anything you want. A scarf, a blanket, um, anything. So this swatch here is with the paint box that's their wool mix. It's 50% wool and 50% acrylic. I really like the wool mix. Um, it's got great definition, uh, stitch definition. And uh, the only thing I don't uh, care too much is it is a little scratchy but it has really great drape and it the stitch definition is just perfect now you'll see here that my ends my edges here are rolling and that's really not a big deal you can wet block your swatch and and then pin it down and then you'll have a nice nice little square or you can try using a larger hook now for this stitch I used the recommended hook for this and that was <clears> or <throat> is the uh, five millimeter size H hook so I'm going to stop talking about this and we're gonna jump into the stitch so for the stitch for this example I'm going to use the paint box yarn and it is their Simply Aran and it is a hundred percent acrylic yarn and <clears throat> I will also be using this yarns recommended five millimeter H hook so a single crochet stitch is done in multiples of any any number that you want you don't have to worry about any type of math it will you know just throw a couple stitches down and you're gonna learn or you're gonna be able to you won't have any uh, miscounts or anything so to start off with your slip knot you're going to simply just that's a little difficult to show on camera I think you're gonna take your yarn and just twist it to where you get this X here and then you're going to grab this loop of yarn underneath and pull it through. So you get this sliding knot. That way you can slide it back and forth on your hook. Uh, you can make a loose, a looser knot or a, a bigger knot. So you'll simply just twist it around to where you have this X and then you'll pull the yarn, your working yarn, through the loop. You'll always have your end. For me, I'm left-handed, so I keep my end in my left hand, and I do my twist with my right hand, and I pull through to make that that knot. Okay, so one more time. I have my my end in my left hand. Twist around to where you have that knot and your working yarn will go on top of your end yarn when you make that little X and then you will take your working yarn and you'll pull it underneath and into the loop okay and then you'll just pull it tight and then when you're ready you stick your hook in grab the working end of your yarn and pull it now like I said single crochet is multiples so you can make any multiples of chains any number of chains and you're going to be just fine so to make a chain you're going to yarn over 
and then simply pull through the loop. Yarn over, pull through the loop. You want to make sure that your loop is big enough and consistent with your hook so that you have a consistent looking braid. So you'll yarn over and pull through one. Yarn over, pull through one. And so what ends up happening is on one side you get braids or hearts or arrows, whatever you want to call them. But it'll look like this on one side and then you'll have these bumps on the other side. <coughs> and that is what your chain stitch will look like. And it needs to be it doesn't need to be, but it all it helps very well in the consistency of your chain and your stitches here, here at the bottom if they're pretty even in uh, tension. And that just takes time, learning how to get the right tension. And you'll learn there's no right or wrong way to hold your hook, and there's no right or wrong way to hold your yarn. You will find a way that is comfortable for you and people will suggest you know hold your hook like this or hold your hook like this but it's what's comfortable for you and also what's comfortable for your wrist and then the, the way you hold your yarn. I've seen so many people wrap, them, wrap the yarn around their fingers. I simply have it like this. In the beginning where I'm working my chain, I like to keep the end of my yarn away from the working of my yarn and I simply just hold it like this. It also gives me uh, some tension here on the loop so that I'm able to get some consistent stitches. And as it gets longer, you know, you just let it, I let it fall away. So I just yarn over, I pull through one, yarn over. And then you'll just continue to repeat this yarn over pull through one until you've reached the amount of stitches or chain stitches that you're happy with. See, and so you'll have a braid that looks like this. Now, now this is your chain stitch. These are your individual chains. And this, some people will call this your row one, some people will call this your chain row, your chain stitch. Um, I call this your cha the chains, your chain stitches. And your row one is the beginning of the pattern. So for our single crochet, we're going to skip this first stitch, this first chain right here, and we're going to work into the next chain here. This loop on your hook does not count as your first chain. This counts as your first chain, and here is your second. So for our single crochet, you're simply going to insert your hook into the chain, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, and pull through two. And again, in the next chain, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, and pull through two. And you're going to repeat that for the remaining of your chain. So insert your hook, Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Now I like to work in the back bumps of my chain stitch because it gives you a nice edge here on the bottom. 
You can work into any part of the chain that you wish. Now here we're at our last chain and we're simply going to just do our last single crochet in the chain. So you have your row one, your front and back of it. Now row two, you will chain one and that brings you up to the height that you will need for your chain two. And you will do your first chain right underneath here. Right in that first stitch. So insert your hook right into that very first stitch. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over and pull through two. And you're going to continue to insert your hook in between each of these post stitches to complete your single crochet. So yarn, so you're going to insert your hook, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. And you'll continue to repeat that for the remaining of your row. And the more you work on it, the more you practice, the more you'll get good tension, even stitches, and you just get better at it. Now you're coming up onto the last stitch of your row. You don't want to forget that or you're going to start decreasing in your rows. So make sure you get that last stitch in your row one. Now row two or row three will be just like row two. You will make a chain, you'll turn your work, and you're going to begin your first single crochet into that very first stitch. And you'll work your way all the way across, not to forget that last stitch so you don't decrease. And eventually you'll get something that looks like this. Now, to fasten off, you simply pull up a loop Grab your scissors, cut your working yarn here. You want to make sure that you have enough yarn so you have so you can weave in your ends. So you're going to cut your yarn. I have to cut myself. And you take your loop and then you just insert the yarn right into the middle of it and pull it tight. Now I have forgotten that I have that chain stitch there so I'm going to pull that chain stitch out and then you take your yarn through the loop making a knot and pulling it tight. Just like that. Now there are different sizes of yarn needles or darning needles. So you'll have, let's see what, I only have these two in here. Yeah, okay. So I have these two in here, and this one is obviously much larger, and I use it for my bulkier, chunkier type yarns, and then I have this one for my thinner type yarns. So you just simply, if your yarn is small, 
I give it a nice little twist and I just thread my yarn through the needle, the top of the needle. And you just work with, work with the yarn. I usually find like a nice little stitch to first get it in there and to hide that, that beginning and end knot. And then I work, start working my yarn through the stitches. Careful not to split a stitch. It might make it look, your finished work might not look as well. And I will go in and out of the yarn, or I'll, I'll weave in and out at least two or three times to make sure that that yarn, that end, is nice and snug and it's not going to come out at all. And I give it a good little pull to make sure that everything is going to be consistent. So that will be how it will look. And then when you're done, just simply cut your yarn just like that. And then you're done. You've weaved in your end. And of course I have one down here too as well. But for just this example, we'll do the one. So that is it for this beginner's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you would like to continue learning some basics of uh, crochet and also advancing your skill, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. It's greatly appreciated. So I'll see you guys later. Have a great one. Bye, you guys.